Hi, everybody. It's Jill here with Illuminating Women, and we're here for our 15-minute coffee break and connect, where you take a break, grab your cup of coffee or tea, and learn something really valuable as you're with your sisters. So today, I'm excited to bring with you this beautiful woman practitioner I've known for a handful of years, and the women that have worked with her have totally made a difference in their health. She's going to speak to us today about having a healthy gut. And if you know if any, all of the science and everybody's talking about the importance of that healthy, healthy gut is, is critical for our overall health. So uh, Kathleen Yowells, I'd like to welcome you here today. And if you could just share a little bit about who you are and then tell us about our healthy gut and what is it we need to know. Thank you, Jill. Well, good morning, ladies. And I'm happy to be here and I'm really excited to share my knowledge and experience with you. Uh, you've heard the saying, we teach what we need to learn. So I was born with a strong constitution, but not in good health. And I have struggled with my health my entire life. Um, in fact, my parents moved here from California when I was eight upon a doctor's suggestion that the climate may do me better. Uh, and actually, I don't know if it was the climate, but moving away from the orchards <laughs> with the pesticides and herbicides was helpful to my health. So I started searching really uh, right in my first year of college for um, alternative solutions for myself, not even really knowing what was out there. I spent my entire senior year with Epstein-Barr and mononucleosis. Um, and I struggled. In fact, I never even liked chocolate. I had so much X-lax as a little girl that I thought chocolate was X-lax, right? So just to give you a picture of where I'm coming from. So I eventually found my way. I started with nutrition. And then I found my way into naturopathy. And uh, actually, my first uh, job in alternative health care is I gave colonics, colon hydrotherapy. And I eventually went on to get my massage license and open my own clinic. Uh, I got my massage license in 1981. So I'm an oldie but a goodie. And I opened Eastside Wellness Center in 1987. And for years I did, uh, I would do, you know, body work, mostly lymphatic drainage. And then I added the chine song and the belly work. And then I would put people on the clonic machine and give them a clonic. So, I really feel like all those years I got a really firsthand uh, knowledge, you know, of how the system works at a real deep level. And so today I'm just going to do three health tips, uh, health gut tips. These are things that I really kind of share with most of my clients when they come in. And the very first one, it may seem simple, and I know some of you may know this information, Sharon, I'm sure you do. Uh, but to know the pathway of digestion, how does digestion work? Because if you start having digestive upsets or uh, your energy's not flowing, or maybe you're having trouble experiencing a, a digesting a life experience or emotions, um, you know, it's good to, to be able to kind of do some, put on your detective hat and see what's happening in your gut, in your system. So, we put food in our mouth and we chew. And the old macrobiotic saying, chew your food a hundred times in the mouth, is because we start the breakdown of carbohydrate digestion. We start breaking down carbohydrates in, uh, with our saliva. The, the enzymes that are secreted in our saliva begin that breakdown. And I often threatened for years I was gonna get a plaque and put it in my room that said, your stomach doesn't have teeth, right? So the digestive system, as I explained it, it's just, it's like a factory. The current function depends on the function before that happening correctly. So if you don't chew your food, you've got big chunks of food and the stomach doesn't have teeth. So we chew our food and we chew it thoroughly. We swallow it and it goes down into the stomach. And now the stomach is, you can see it's right here kind of on the left. It's tucked up underneath the left rib cage and just a little bit below it. And the stomach secretes the digestive enzyme hydrochloric acid. 
And what does hydrochloric acid do? Well, it, it creates a very acidic environment. It starts the breakdown of protein. It also, I find it so fascinating how our physiology works. It also paralyzes parasites so that they can have a smooth transit out of our system and not create any havoc. Once that stomach reaches a certain pH level, uh, the valve opens on the end of the stomach and now all the food is all mixed up in this bolus of liquid and, and food. And it squirts into the first part of the small intestines, the duodenum. And when the bolus gets there, what happens is that the gallbladder squirts its fat splitting enzymes into the mix. And then the good old pancreas, right? We kind of think the pancreas just secretes insulin, but actually the pancreas has a huge role in digestion. It comes at the end and it throws out di uh, end digestive enzymes to finish the job of protein, carbs, and fat. And um, I like to kind of that first part of the duodenum is kind of like a roundabout, right? In a neighborhood. <laughs> they, I, I often feel really a hardness in there when I'm working it. Things tend to get really stuck right there. And so I'm going to stand up so you can see on my body, okay? I'm going to show you my little, my, my little, my tummy. But um, so right here, if you take your palm and the center of your, spread your fingers, and right in the center of your palm, if you put that over your navel, right, the center of your navel, right in the middle of your palm, that's where you have 20 feet of small intestines. They're all coiled in there like a snake, right? And this is where you absorb, or not, right? And this is where you make you, we continue to repair and restore, is from the food that we absorb, or, or not. Um, and so once the food is absorbed in, you know, the nutrients from the food are absorbed in the small intestines, now it's going to squirt out right in the lower right hand, right where your appendix would be, in the uh, lower right hand corner. And now there's a little bit more of nutrient digestion, minerals, and B vitamins. And now the water is starting to be absorbed. We're starting to form our stool. And that's, that bolus has to travel all the way up our right side. It has to defy gravity. And so we're gonna talk about what helps with that. Fiber, water, and breathing most of all. Breathing most of all. And then the food travels across the transverse, down the left side, kind of curves right here at the left hip and out the poop chute. So that's the pathway of digestion. And so, you know, uh, if you're bloating immediately after you eat, that's information. Uh, if you bloat several hours after you eat, that's information. It's just all information. What, what's happening here? Where is the factory breaking down? So it's good to know the pathway of digestion. And I'm going to... Um, Let's see, I don't know if I can share. I can. Oh, share. This is the little picture I wanted to show you, gals. Um, so you can see that the parotid gland is where the carb uh, enzymes come in and it goes down the esophagus into the stomach, uh, down into the small intestines. It comes over there where it says the cecum and travels up and over and down and around. And this big guy here is your liver. It's so big. And the pancreas is kind of tucked right in there underneath the stomach and the transverse colon or transverse large intestine. So uh, that's kind of just wanted to get you an idea of that. Now, so my three gut health tips. Number one, know the pathway of digestion. Number two, support your digestion. And I don't want to spend a long time here. I just want to kind of just, because uh, I want to get onto the meat uh, before we run out of time. But, uh, you know, diet, 
uh, a course. It's very personal. Everyone knows that we shouldn't eat anything that's processed, fried, white, sugar, alcohol, all of our favorites, right? Um, <laughs> but eat plants. That's what I encourage in my, client, uh, my class. Eat plants as much as you can. Just focus on increasing your plants at every meal if you can. Every morning I have vegetables with my breakfast. This morning I had two poached eggs in a big acorn squash. You know, uh, and sometimes I'll take my sauteed vegetables from the night before and throw it on there. So eat, we need fiber, which is my next thing. None of us get enough fiber. 95% of Americans don't even get half the amount of fiber. And I liken fiber to the street sweeper, right? It's like the street sweeper going in your coal and sweeping out all the nooks and crannies. And it increases your immunity. It's good for heart health. Um, and I encourage my clients to start their morning out with a little bit of fiber and warm water. Digestive food enzymes. You know, I'm good friends with the naturopath. And for years, we were, we were talking the other day and she says, yeah, I'm just telling everybody over 35 that they need digestive food enzymes. And I said, I thought you told me it was 45. She said, well, I'm changing it to 35 <laughs> because of um, our diet, you know, and the thing about digestive food enzymes, I think of them as support. Once you kind of take them to support your body, if it's not making enough di um, carb enzymes or the hydrochloric acid, uh, you begin to digest your food better and absorb better. You're absorbing better, so you make more enzymes. Um, and I've seen this over and over and over again, and it's very different. Some people need more than others. You know, I'd often say, I had a gal once say, oh, the enzymes didn't work. And she had terrible digestion. She took one. I'm like, would you go work out in the garden and take a bath and a cup of water? No. So it's very individual. Um, the other thing is water, 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 water. And I'm sure you all know the rule of thumb, right? You take your weight and you divide that number in half. So if you weigh 100 pounds, you need 50 ounces of water a day. And uh, if you eat sugar or uh, prescription drugs, alcohol, caffeine, again, all of these are dehydrating. And it's funny because when I gave colonics, um, we're all dehydrated, we just are. Uh, and uh, when I would give clonics, I would tell people, you know, well, make sure you come hydrated. They, well, I drank a lot of water the night before. Well, it takes a long time to get hydrated. That's good, but I would always say, well, your body's gonna take a nice expensive drink of water. And at that time I charged $90 a pop. So it was an expensive drink of water because the body would not eliminate until they were fully hydrated. And the colon, the large intestine, uh, you know, that's what we call auto intoxication. Uh, you know, when, you, when it gets really toxic and it seeps back into the bloodstream. So water is important. I now am, I, for years, I wasn't really into a, a daily organic vitamin and mineral. I am now. Uh, research shows that the vitamin and mineral content of fruits and vegetables has steadily gone down since the 50s. So even organics, we're just not getting the nutrients that we need. And as we age, uh, you know, uh, everything gets just a little bit slower. So it's just a good idea for prevention. And the last thing is, uh, stress. You know, the more I practice, the more I see what, how much stress creates havoc. So to be able to identify stress, uh, to reduce stress, uh, to have ways that, you know, you, you uh, deal with it, which leads me into my last uh, three gut health tips is learn how to massage your gut. You guys, this is such a simple, simple, but powerful, effective tool. Um, one of my teachers, Mantak Chia, says that if you just would do a little bit of belly work for even 10 minutes a day, daily for one year, you can totally reset your digestion and your uh, emotional well-being and a lot of structural issues.
And the reason that is, is because when we are uh, at the moment of conception, when that embryo attaches to the uterine wall, the cells start dividing and they divide creating three fascial tubes, digestion, circulation, and the nervous system. And then it's just fill in the blanks, right? So the navel and the, and the navel, and I'm gonna show you just one move today. Uh, the navel is the center of our fascial system. It's the gateway. The navel is where all the fascial development begins. It's where we receive nourishment from mom. It's where we throw back our toxins. And just because we're born doesn't mean that that changes. In Chine Song philosophy, um, you know, whenever you have uh, digestive issues, uh, structural issues, surgery, accidents, injuries, unfelt emotions, the body in its innate wisdom, the fascia will always pull back to the navel for detoxification. This is our, our gut is our recycle center. So when someone comes to see me, the first thing I do is look at their navel. And, you know, there's a whole diagnosis. You can see what organs are being pulled and all sorts of things. Um, so just working with that slowly unwinds the entire fascial system. And I can vouch dropped pelvises, uh, shoulder problems, uh, neck problems, low back. I'll tell you, neck for sure. If somebody comes to me with a neck issue, I immediately go to their belly. So all of these things that are not digestive issues can be handled with um, belly work. The other thing I love about belly work in Shini's song is it's meant to be shared. I love that so much. I always want my clients to have tools that they can do on themselves and not have to go throw, you know, a hundred bucks at a practitioner. So this is something that you can not only do on yourself, but your children and friends and family. Uh, and uh, so with the belly work, there's only just a couple of moves, but you're really moving, you're really creating space in your gut for the organs to kind of fall back into their rightful place so they can do their job. You're not trying to fix anything. You know, people come in to see me and they just want to talk endless about their diagnoses. I don't even really care what the diagnosis is in a way. I mean, I do, I do. But you know, it, in the big scheme of things, it's just a label that we put on the body not working properly. So um, uh, what we really, I'm going to, find where I was. Um, um, actually, my whole intent with folks is that I can inspire them, inspire you, to begin a journey of just establishing a greater connection to your guts. Because when you start, and people are afraid to touch their guts. They, and I, I noticed that we don't want to breathe. We'll breathe for two or three times and we want to chat about what happened yesterday. You know, and I guide people back to their breath because the belly work is powerful, but the belly work with the breath is amazing. Uh, my teacher always says, if you don't poop, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're not pooping right, you're not breathing right. Because when we breathe, that's what moves the fecal matter from the right side all the way up to find gravity across the transverse and down the left side for evacuation. So uh, in my class, we start out with just belly breathing. And I don't want people to breathe faster or more deeply honor your own rhythm. The deeper breaths and the more expanded breaths come as we loosen our, uh, our guts and our organs, right? So we just start out with a gentle in inhaling through the nose. I often have people visualize their diaphragm dropping and their tummy moving away from their spine, out away from your body. And then on the exhalation, the tummy falls back towards the spine the diaphragm goes up and we exhale through the nose. Now, if it's a really big release, you can through your mouth, but I believe that the mouth is for breathing, or excuse me, the nose is for breathing. 
It warms the air and the mouth is for eating. So I like to begin a belly session with several rounds of just this deep belly breathing. And eventually, <clears throat> when you have that mastered, I'll have uh, you put your hands around your two, I'm looking at myself, I'm small, but your two floating ribs. Because on an inhalation, they should just move out slightly, just slightly. I'm exaggerating it. On the exhale, they knit together. And eventually, the back body, it moves away from the spine. As the front abdomen is moving away from the spine this way, the back body is, the back abdomen is moving this way and the ribs are moving out and then it all kind of collapses back and the diaphragm rises. This allows you to get much more oxygen in your lungs and it also is massaging the guts, that diaphragm dropping and that uh, ligament pulling up the right uh, ascending colon to help move the waste over to be eliminated as it should. So there's not, it's not rocket science. There's just a little bit of moves. We follow the pathway of digestion. So I usually start out with some breath work, even for myself, even if I'm just going to do it for five minutes, I'll take and maybe breathe for a minute, right? And then what you do, and I'm, um, let's see, I'm going to there I am. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Can you guys, I'm going to show you my tummy. Can you see my tummy? Okay, I can't see it very well. So, but you can? Yeah? Yes, yeah? yes we okay. can see it. All right. So here's my tummy in all her glory. And now you usually do chine song or belly work laying down with your knees up always with your knees up you want to be relaxed but i just kind of want to show you guys so i've done a few breaths and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take my finger pads and i'm going to put it you never go in the navel you never go in the navel you stay right around the rim and sometimes that's kind of hard because we, some of us have gnarly navels right i call them gnarly navels and you just start doing these little tiny circles little tiny circles towards your left hip it's my left hip. And I'm just going to go around. I know it's hard to see, guys. Um, I'm just going around doing these little circles all around the navel. If I find a tender spot, I stop. I take a couple of breaths. And on the exhalation, I really go in and shake it. And you can just start expanding your circle and bigger and bigger. And that is the most basic move of uh, Chine Song, belly massage. That's called navel detoxification. And then we also learn how to massage our stomach, our liver, our gallbladder, our pancreas, the small intestines. Now, you can get to the small intestines by just continuing to make your circles bigger and bigger, concentric circles, bigger and bigger. And at some point you can just, you know, as long as you're going right to left, following the pathway of digestion, you're good. Um, and if you find areas that are painful or tender, uh, those are places that are calling out for support and help. You just might want to lighten your pressure, work around it, maybe eventually back onto it and on the, exhalation you can just kind of go down and just shake it you might feel a little hard bumps it's lymph congestion um and eventually those will uh start to uh uh empty you know they're just full and and uh for uh to the the pathway of digestion, you're getting all those little, and you'll find like there's can be nerves embedded in there. You'll just feel all these hard lumps and bumps. They call them tangles in Chine Song. Doesn't matter what you want to call them. Just keep working them gently, patiently, and uh, it will dissipate. Your shoulder pain will, you know, clear up after three or four days. Your low back pain, it's just kind of amazing. Um, this is uh, incredible information. You're get, you just filled us up. I mean, I'm just sitting here taking notes and I'm going, when is she having her workshop again? I mean, I, I go to this. I'll just leave it open for questions there. Well, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording so that we can have a more personal chat. Okay. But how, if somebody wants to reach you, how can they, how can they find you? Um, 
you can go to my website, which is eastsidewellnesscenter.com. Okay. Eastsidewellnesscenter.com. And the best way to, is to reach me by email. My ringer is usually off because I'm always in session, but I, even my voicemails come deciphered as emails. And my email is just info at eastsidewellnesscenter.com. So very easy. And I'm located in Kirkland. And you're located in Kirkland. This is great. So um, we're going to still uh, have our chat time and because uh, this is more girlfriend and get a little more questions. And uh, boy, thank you so much, Kathleen, for coming in. Um, I learned a lot and I so believe our gut health is critically important to our overall health. It's, it's primary. It's you got to. And, and I get it. So thank you. This was very valuable. Ladies, stay on and we'll chat a little more. Bye-bye and come check us out at illuminatingwomen.com. Bye-bye.